okay, you want to check your oil, make sure it's at the proper level and also the proper type of oil. Ask the customer if you suspect it or change it if you're not sure. But of course, oil is very important on the uh, on all the engines, but especially on the 7.3 and 6.0 because we use it as a hydraulic fluid for the injectors. Now, same as with the 6.0, if you suspect you might have a bad ICP sensor causing you no start because of a bad reading. Normally, if that's the case, they, they read high or they read zero. But uh, anyhow, if you suspect that's your problem, you don't have to go out and buy a new sensor at first. Just inspect it, see if there's any signs of oil. That's actually some uh, the, the, the grease to keep it um, sealed there. But this one right here, it seems good. But if you suspect an ICP sensor, just unplug it. It will default. If the pressure is there, it'll start. So I don't, I do not have a bad ICP right now. So I'll go on and test out some other stuff here and see what's going on. Now, but the second most common thing I find with the 7.3 for low injection pressure is the IPR valve. So I keep a known good one. I'm going to try that and see what we get. Um, again, because that's the second most common thing. And also you'll find these normally when hot. I'll have them stall out on me when I'm driving all of a sudden die and I won't build up my injection pressure, my IPR. So always keep one of these. Good for testing when you get in situations like this. And as far as tools of choice when I'm doing that, is a snap-on uh, flex head ratchet with the inch and an eighth socket. Works perfectly. I can get down in here and get in there and take the IPR valve off with pretty much a little bit of effort. Just remove the wastegate solenoid and uh, reach down in there and get it. So anyhow, we'll try the IPR valve and see where we get on this one and what's next. Here. On 7.3, sometimes I have bad PCMs. I usually get one or two a year, especially on uh, 95, 96, 97s, but even the 99 and up, I still get bad PCMs on them. So what I like to do, take the PCM completely out of the picture. I just take a, uh, I'm gonna jump, apply 12 volts to the IPR valve. The, uh, these connectors, when you have the old 7.3 um, the valve cover gaskets, the injector wire loom, just cut a piece off here and I'll take it and I'll make it, I'll jump it straight to the battery, apply 12 volts to the IPR, that full fields it, that also makes it so it's same as 65%, but yet even though we saw the PCM commanding 65%, we don't know if it was there, if there's a break in the wire, if there's PCM, but when I do this, now I've taken the PCM out of the loop. I've got right back to just the basic engine cranking. So I'll take this out. Uh, I'll take this, plug it into the IPR, put it to the battery 12 volts, and I'll see if my comp uh, pressure comes up. So I'll check this one, see what happens. Okay, the IPR valve did not fix the issue either. So my next option is to deadhead the pump. We're going to isolate it right down to the pump. Disconnect the lines at the head and would we'll hook it up here. This will give the signal back to the so I can monitor and see what it's building up to. And this is to cap off the other side. And also they're reversible, so if we do find it to start with one of them off, we can try to isolate it to which head is leaking if that's the case or find out if we have a bad pump. So I'll run that test and show you the results of that. Okay, I, even with the IPR with the 12 volts applied to it. Still had a crank no start, pressure won't build above 65. So now I want to find out, do I have a leak in the heads or do I have a bad pump? Again, path of least resistance. We're going to check the um, to see the pump itself because it's a lot quicker. So I've disconnected it. I've taken a, uh, I've got an ICP sensor here in the line. It's just taking them right out of the pump. Disconnected them both off the head. And I've used this jumper. Here's your part number if you want to find it. So it's a jumper kit that's good. If you, also, if you don't want to use the IDS, you can just use a volt ohm meter and watch your uh, voltage and see what your pressure is getting. Just cross it over. But anyhow, on this one now, I've taken it. We've deadheaded the pump. We have it. So now it's, again, PCM's out of the loop. 12 volts commanded straight to it. We have the pump what they call deadheaded. I have just the the sensors right the sensor right there on the end and checked it and I still have no I, I still don't won't build over 65 psi 
So we have definitely have a bad pump because there's nothing else in this but the mechanical pump. So uh, we know that that's a confirmed problem with it. Now if you did end up the pressure building, a few things you should know. A weak pump, when it's deadheaded like this, can build up pressure. So see how long it takes to build it up and don't, you, you still may have a problem or you may have a leak in one side. So if you find that when you have them both disconnected and your pressure comes off, try switching them around between the two. At least that way you can isolate if you have a leak in which cylinder head if that's the case and you can check it. And there's also another trick to when you do that as far as uh, doing what they call a, a dual ICP test in your EVP sensor. The, um, you can go ahead and do that. You monitor ICP voltage. You disconnect your EVP sensor here. And then with the same jumper that we have here, you take your EVP sensor, screw an ICP sensor in this cylinder head on your passenger side, and watch the voltage between your EVP voltage and your ICP voltage, and they should mirror each other. If they don't, then you can see which one has the problem, and you can find your leak that way and see if you can pull the valve cover and look at your base of your injectors. But pretty much, that's how I go about diagnosing a 7.3 crank nose start, low ICP.